question is, um, how much attention is paid to iatrogenic harm in hospital, which is harm arising from the care itself? Well, in hospital, and actually this is a huge topic of concern, and there's a whole um, movement around this in British Columbia called Moro B, and this is um, being looked at very carefully in an interdisciplinary settings where they study things like near misses, and it comes from places like the um, aviation industry where they've become so good at avoiding accidents. So we don't just study when things go wrong, we study when things might have gone wrong. And this is training that's taking place in various stages around the province. It's um, adapted from programs that have come from the US. I'm gonna ask my medical colleagues to speak more on this because this isn't really my area so much. However, I can certainly tell you it's a huge focus right now. So I'm happy to say, as Patty's been plugging more OB, that Fraser Health is in the process of adopting more OB in all of our hospitals, so we're very excited about that. Um, the, however, I'd say that the, the biggest study that's been done on um, risks that have been introduced by the hospital setting would be what we call external fetal monitoring, which is monitoring of babies in labor, and we have good documentation that the only thing that that hospital intervention has done it has been to increase the risk of cesarean section. So our rising cesarean section rate is ample evidence that we are not doing all the right things in the hospital. And I think we, while we don't have particular studies, we have whole trends in population. And in fact, many people believe that the cesarean section rate has reached such a height in the United States that it is in fact the reason for the rising maternal mortality that they are now seeing in, in, I think they are the only developed country in the world that actually has rising maternal mortality. And there's some thought that that's related to cesarean section, although there are countries that do have very high cesarean section rates that haven't had that experience. So I don't think there's any particular study that's been done. However, I do think there's lots of studies um, about things that we do to women and have thought that they were good things to do uh, and have subsequently realized that they are introducing harm, not benefit. However, I would say that in BC, there has been a whole uh, um, curriculum that's been developed nationally called fetal health surveillance and we're actively engaged in trying to teach that to all of the healthcare providers in Fraser Health, and, and I know in many other health authorities as well. And um, a big part of that is to uh, not do external fetal monitoring with a continuous monitor, but to use another type of continuous fetal monitoring that's called uh, intermittent auscultation, and to make sure that all the healthcare providers are as comfortable with intermittent auscultation uh, which has been shown to not introduce any a adverse risks. And, and intermittent auscultation means um, listening sometimes, but, we, but the, the frequency with which we listen has been determined by studies to be shown to create safety. And we know that that increases the risk of successful vaginal birth, which is a good risk, increases the risk of um, that you're going to have your baby on your own without having somebody have to help the baby out with forceps or vacuum, and it decreases the risk that you're gonna have a bad intervention, which is cesarean section. So that is a, is a technique that we are really espousing and trying to move towards. It's the only technique that we use to listen to babies in a home birth setting, which is why the cesarean section rate is lower. I'm, I'm sure that the, it, it was an interesting thing for me to hear um, a person speak about how incubators have increased risk to babies. And it's been an assumption that the incubator was a good thing, but in fact it was actually created to hatch chich chickens and then somebody thought it would be a good idea to use for babies. And in fact, the same people thought that the reason the babies were dying in the incubators was that their mothers were touching them too much. So in fact, not only did you get an incubator, but you got a mother that wasn't allowed to touch her baby. And somehow this was a good and healthy intervention that medicine developed. And he was, he's not really well liked by a lot of his medical colleagues because he's shown literature that, or he's shown through research that babies are actually better if they're skin to skin with their mother than they are when they're in the incubator. And so it, it is an interesting thing to think about is when we start to question our paradigm that hospital birth is safe, what could we learn? And I'm sure we could learn an awful lot. 
um, comment that um, my second passion next to maternity care is quality improvement. And hospitals are extremely serious about improving the quality of their care. It may not be published in the research, but they are doing a lot of internal research on how to make sure that we um, decrease mistakes, that we decrease the amount of harm. Because one of the things in terms of in general hospitals, not just maternity hospitals, but 30% of deaths in a hospital are caused by error, medical error. So no, knowing that hospitals have um, suddenly in the last 10 years become very concerned about how to prevent all those prevent how to stop all those preventable mistakes. And Women's Hospital is very committed to um, quality improvement. And one of the big things we're talking about infection is we have this huge, huge hand washing campaign that's been going on. And we have these auditors going around every few weeks watching everybody and counting how many times you wash your hands and if you're doing it properly. And we're all like, we call them the hand washing police. But it's actually working and the culture is shifting. And if you notice in hospitals, you'll find these hand washing things like every 10 feet at the elevator, at the door, at every room. And so with all of these kind of interventions, we are paying a lot of attention to infection rates and not causing harm. So that isn't always in the published literature, but hospitals are giving that data, to feeding it back to themselves and trying to change behavior on the part of everybody. And also thinking about how, what kind of ideas have we got to prevent harm? For example, two medications might come in a package that looks alike, and so if you, you can accidentally give someone the wrong medication. So someone had the idea, well, let's make sure this one's green and this one's red so people don't mix them up. Those kind of ideas, just constantly, constantly thinking about how do we learn from mistakes, how do we prevent mistakes. So there is, um, there is that attention to trying to make hospitals safer. But there are some bottom line things that you can't change, which is things like the culture around using interventions and the, and the things about how women um, feel about in being in hospital and privacy and fear and comfort and how all those things affect labor. And those are harder things to adjust in a hospital.